browser automation on Lambda Test. Lambda Test supports browser automation on desktops, emulator simulators, as well as on real devices. The screen that you see is the automation dashboard where you get all of your tests and builds landed down here. How before I explain or go through this particular UI and how we reach up till here, let's get into the code base section. So here I have a very basic test case written where I'm simply opening up a URL, performing a few actions, driver weights, performing a few clicks and that's it. So any of your test case on any of your web applications that you might have be currently running on your local browser or on a cloud infrastructure or on your remote grid, you can very easily translate those tests onto Lambda test and it's a simple two-step process. The first step is you need a Lambda test username, access key and a hub URL. Now the Lambda test hub URL is an address to the Lambda test grid under which you get all the device selections or all the browsers and the username and access key is to authenticate yourself as a user on the platform from where you can get these three is from the lambda test ui itself under the access key option just click and you'll get the hub the username and access key rightly from here once you have all these options then you need the lambda test capabilities so capabilities are nothing but instructions that you provide the Lambda test script as to what particular browser operating system you want to run the test on, what particular version, what are all the different types of logs you want, and so forth. How you can create a capability object specific to Lambda test is by using the Lambda test capability generator. Just simply click on this question mark icon just besides the access key. Here, just click on the capability generator. Since Lambda test is language agnostic, that is any language or any framework that you have your test case on, we can run it on our devices. So based on the language or framework you have, you can simply select the language and select the framework. In my case, it's Java, so I'm leaving it as is. And then you can select if it's a Selenium test case or an APM test case, that is if you want to run it on a desktop browser or mobile browser. and you can select the different sets of capabilities. So in my case, if I select Edge and then a different version, and then if I click on Advanced, I click on the operating system I want to run on. If I want a particular resolution, a Selenium version, and to have pop-ups, I want to run it on Selenium CDP. So all of these can be selected. There are different types of capabilities that we support, like the build name, different test tags that you can add. Uh, you can also record screenshots or capture screenshots for every command, record a video. You can test out your local applications by using a tunnel. For that, you just need to pass in tunnels as a capability. So all of those capabilities, whatever we support, you can easily get it from this capability generated documentation. Once you have the capability, generated, capability object from the capability generator, simply copy it from there and paste it here. And once you have the capabilities and the username, access key, and the hub URL, you just need to create a remote web driver connection, which will interact with Lambda test. So here in this case, I have my username, access key, the hub URL, and, and the capabilities, which in turn is creating a remote web driver connection to my Lambda test script. So since I have all of these, I can simply start my test case. Before I start my test case, I would also like to highlight that since I'm using a Java test ng project, I am configuring the desktop browser and versions in an XML file. And from this particular XML file, all of these are getting triggered to my platform. So in my case, I have four different browsers that I've selected. So and here, since I have all of that, I just simply In a couple of seconds, while the test is getting initiated here, you'll also see the test getting landed on the Lambda test platform.
Let me quickly refresh to check. Yep, as you can see, I have four different uh, browser combinations that uh, are running and they all are running parallelly. So on Lambda test, you can run your automation test cases parallelly depending on the number of parallel connections you have with Lambda test. So in my case, I have run 310 parallels, which means that at a single instance of time, I can run 310 test cases on different OS browser combinations. On Lambda test, we also provide you a feature called live interaction, where you have the ability to get the access of the browser where your test is currently running and perform actions manually, which will help you debug or understand if there are any pertaining issues that you're working on. So in this case, I have the access to this current browser where if you want to choose this or I want to get into the network logs, I can interact with this browser and get all of those details. Now, as I was talking earlier, this is the build view where you get all of the builds that you ran on the Lambda test platform and you can search or filter out the builds based on the test name from the search bar. Once you have the build, inside those build, you have all the test cases that were executed in that particular build along with its uh, browser version, the windows and the time that it took to execute. Also along with the status as well. So Lambda test by default marks the test cases as completed. And in order to mark those test cases as failed or passed, we have our Lambda test hooks, which you can use to mark your test cases as failed or passed based on your test cases. Then getting into the test case, you'll get a full fledged detailed view of all of the test execution on the top. You can see the status that the test has been passed. Then you have the test name along with the test ID. And on the right hand side, you have the configuration where the test run on along with the time. Below it, you have a complete execution video of that particular test that ran and which will get started in a moment. Yeah. And below it, you have the basic info like uh, who ran the test, how much time it took, what was the Selenium version it ran on. Input config basically gives you the details of all the capabilities that you used while running the test. Then the video gives you the complete video and the screenshots. Then you have the command logs here. So the command logs are basically synced with the video. So if in case you're particularly debugging and there's an error on a particular command, you can directly click on that command. So the video automatically aligns to that particular moment and it is same with the video then you also have the network logs network logs are basically all of the network requests that are getting captured during your test execution other than that you also have a few selenium logs the raw selenium logs the browser console logs that kept capture and the terminal logs as well out of these the network logs the browser console logs and terminal logs everything can be controlled using capabilities which means that if you do not require these logs you can pass the capability as false and these logs won't be captured lamb test also captures screenshot of each and every command that you're running so with each and every command that you're running you also get a screenshot of the command when it gets executed so this was all about browser testing on lambda test However, when we talk about testing or automation testing, you might also be concerned about reporting. So with Lambda test, you also get an option to create complete reporting using our APIs. So whatever you see on the Lambda test dashboard, that is the logs, the video, screenshots, you can fetch everything using these APIs and you can use it on your site to build a reporting based on whatever data you need. 